Welcome. Continue the study of the integration by substitution. In this, in this video, we're going to see the definite integrals, how to solve definite integrals using the integration by substitution. It's very crucial to know that whenever we're dealing with definite integrals, we are not necessarily doing exactly the same thing as we do with indefinite integrals because we have a new concept here called the change of limits change of limits now let us take an example to understand this concept imagine here you have for example the integration of we can see 3x squared plus 1 all this thing raised to 5 of 6x dx now when you want to do integration by substitution we uh, we try to find which one are going to take as u and which one are going to take as du. In this case, this is a definite integral, which means we need um, the interval or the boundaries of that integration. So this is going to be the lower one, this is going to be the upper one. So let us take, for example, this one as 0 and you take this one as 1. So you have the integration of this function from 0 to 1, which is the, our limit of integration. You can imagine that this is this represents the axis of a given function this function here and this is the graph of the function so we are saying that integration from 0 to 1 so we are finding this is 1 so we are finding integration on this area here this is what um, definite integral tells us so this is this curve here is described by this function now we have from 0 to 1 what we have to do when we have this kind of functions is that we know that we cannot apply directly our methods of integration. And if we, we may be tempted to um, expand this polynomial expression, and then you're going to have a lot of uh, integrations that you have to do separately, and this becomes too lengthy. So one of the ways to solve this thing is using substitution u du. So in this case, you're going to have u and also going to have du. This means that you want to express this function in form of in, with respect to another variable and then you find the equivalence. Look at this. We have to see here what is the thing in which we have its derivative expressed in this same function here. If you see, if you find the derivative of this, this is the power rule, you're going to have 6x, this is 0, so we're going to have 6x dx. So this would be our function and the derivative of this function is 6x dx. Right? So this means that this is our u, the function whose derivative is present here in this expression. So this is going to be u is equal to 3x squared plus 1. And then du, the derivative of this, is equal to 6x dx with respect to x. This side with respect to u, this side with respect to x. Now, continuing this, we are now going to get the integration Expressing this now in terms of u, whenever we have this, we replace by u. So we're going to have u raised to 5. And whenever we have 6x dx, we're going to put it du. We're going to put it du. Now, the big question is, what are the limits of this integration? What are we going to put here? What are we going to put here? A wrong, completely wrong, deadly wrong thing to do here is to put this limit as 0 and take this limit here as 1. That is deadly wrong, completely wrong. You should never do it. Why? Because the limits is 0 to 1. These are limits of x. These are limits of x. These are limits of x. So what this thing means is that this x is equal to 0, 2x is equal to 1. So when you're expressing this function in terms of another variable, in this case our variable is u, we cannot use the same limits that we're using here for x, y. So we have two ways. We may change the limits to make these limits in terms of u, or we can find the result of this and then change the limits as this function changes to respect to x. So this is going to be equal to u raised to 6 divided by 6. Fine? So we're dealing with this as, it, as if it were an um, indeterminate integral. Then what you're going to get here is that you're going to get we know that u means this so we're going to say 3x squared plus 1 all of this raised to 6 divided by 6 
and now that we have transformed this function with respect to x, we have to bring back the limits of x that we have had x 0 and this one x equal to 1. So these limits here are only applicable whenever we are dealing with respect to x. And what we'll do with this in this case, we can come here. We are going to have here in the first part, we are going to have 3 in, 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 in place of x we replace by 1. So we we'll have 3 into 1 square plus 1 all raised to 6 divided by 6 minus we take this so we're going to have 3 and in place of x we put with the lower limit 3 raised to 3, 3 into 0 square plus 1 and we divide this thing by 6 and raise this thing by 6 and then as a result what you're going to have we're going to have here 3 into 1 is equal to 3 plus 1 we're going to have 4 we're going to have 4 raised to 6 divided by 6 minus here in this case 3 into, into 0 is 0 and then we're going to have here 1 raised to 6 divided by 6 so this is like we are saying uh, 4 raised to 6 minus 1 all of this divided by 6 if you see what we've done here is we solve this we convert this into u du and then when we are solving we did not put our limits of integration here we straightforward solve this thing as if it were an indeterminate integral without the limits only when we transform we take it back to x that's when we apply the limits this is way one there is another way of doing this this is called method two what you do is that from the moment you're going to get this which was our u raised to 5 du and we want let us say we want to have uh, the intervals of, of integration here but you cannot use x because this is not a function of x it's a function of u so we have to put new limits here so u is equal to something and u is equal to something now are we going to put here 0? no what you're going to do is that we come to u and to find the limits here for the upper limit we are going to replace in this expression here wherever we have x you are going to replace, replace with the upper limit which is 1 and then we are going to put it as a result here so what we are going to have imagine that this thing now is replaced by 1 so we are going to have 3 into 1 square is 1 so 3 plus 1 is going to be 4 so upper limit is 4 and then lower limit we are only dealing with u we don't touch du only deal with you and then the lower limit is 0 so we're going to have 3 into 0 which is 0 plus 1 becomes 1 so if we transform our limits to express them in terms of u instead of from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1 we're going to have from u is equal to 1 to u is equal to 4 and in this method we can continue solving it here we can solve this so we're going to have u raised to 6 divided by 6 and now i can put the limits of our integration u is equal to 4 fine and then i'm going to get the result of this so in place of u i can make direct substitution and then don't have to uh, come back to this u to replace it with respect to x so in, in place of u what i'm going to put 4 so i'm going to have here 4 this upper limit comes here 4 raised to 6 divided by 6 minus the same thing with the lower limit minus in terms of in, in place of u you put 1 so we're going to have 1 divided by 6 raised to this 6 here this is going to give us 4 raised to 6 minus 1 divided because we have same denominator 6 so if you see this result is the same with this result but what was the difference the difference is that we now change the limits here the limits were changed to u and we solve this expression completely with respect to u and we got the result simpler and it's even faster and in this case here because we wanted to come back to x we did not have to change the limits of integration so we solve it as it were an in indefinite integral and then we converted it back to a function of x and the function of x then we now solved it uh, with the limits of integration with respect to x.